And we are recording. Let's see here. Switch cameras. Turn this off. Welcome, stranger. It's been a few weeks. A uh, customer sent me a Pentax K1000, and uh, I thought now might be a good time to do a um, a video on uh, the um, on the top uh, cover. Uh, I'll get it eventually. Removal and replacing it for amateurs out there that work on their own cameras. The K1000 is um, oh. Very special camera. It's a great camera for beginners to uh, buy and use to learn photography because it's got mechanical speeds, mechanical match needle uh, exposure control, and it forces a beginner to learn about f-stops, uh, speeds, and um, the meter and how they all uh, interlock. And uh, what? I was trying to think of what else. I don't uh, see many K1000s anymore, although I used to. I used to see a lot of them. And uh, mo these days, mostly I see uh, Nikons and Minoltas. And I guess that's about it. Let's get started. Okay, where will we start? Let's see. I guess we'll first start with a little tour. Here's the uh, film counter, which normally is on top of the advance. Release here. Has no collar to lock it in place. It's always going to be released by pressing down. Speed control, very simple, 1 to 1,000. It's presently on 125. Got your flash shoe and your rewind. And you've got a PC connector here and a bayonet mount. The uh, Pentex K1000 is really just a Spotmatic. Uh, Pentex went through several uh, versions of the Spotmatic over the years and then finally pretty much settled into the K1000 and stayed with it for years and years. Eventually, they farmed it out to some other countries. I don't remember how many, but uh, China was one of them. And none of them are any good. I know because they came into my shop. The only good K1000s are the Japanese made. I guess the tolerances are better and materials are better, but something. But uh, the uh, K1000s that were made in the other countries were really cheap and uh, made very badly. And the tolerances are very loose. So anyway... What should we start on? Rewind. Always oh, start with the rewind knob. Open the back like this by pulling up. You've got a set of prongs here which go into your film. And most people will use um, a screwdriver, but you don't want to use a screwdriver. I've said over and over in some of the videos because it will crack these uh, prongs here. And eventually they will break off. So because they create an indent. Always use something flat. In this case, this is my tweezers. You could all use, uh, also use a pair of uh, flat nose pliers to uh, stick it in there like so. And then up here, the amateurs will open it and use this, and this will break off quite often. You don't want to do that. You want to use your fingers, twist it off like so. And it comes right off. And set that aside. The um, uh, K1000 has no washer here. Almost all cameras have a washer, but not the K1000. So that makes things much simpler. The camera basically is very simple to work on inside. When they made it, they uh, got rid of a lot of the uh, complications they had with some of the other cameras. And they made it much simpler. Close that back. Next thing you're going to need is uh, you might have to make a pair of these yourself. I did. There are very few camera tools on the market. Most camera tools had to be made by the person working on the camera. And I don't know if I can hit those holes there by looking at my monitor. Probably not. Maybe I should turn my camera off and try again. Well, I did turn my camera off and did manage to finally get those in there. They were just so small, counterclockwise. And then just use your fingers to get it off like so. Set it aside. Inside here is this little piece. I don't know really what its function is, but uh, it doesn't really do anything. Maybe it's a cover for um, 
dust or something. So if we look at our tray, there's just three pieces there to the rewind. The, um, when they made the new knob, they fixed it to where you can't lose the pin that, uh, maybe a toothpick that uh, is magnetic. On a lot of the cameras, it was a pin in here that would get lost underneath here. It went through this uh, arm. And uh, this time they put some screws in here and put in a clip to hold it down. Made things a lot simpler for the repairman and much better for the owner also. Okay, set that aside. Okay, we've got the um, rewind knob off. Next, um, it's a choice. We can take off this um, advanced lever. We can take off the speed control. I generally prefer to take off the um, advanced lever, get it out of the way. So, what um, do we have to do here? The uh, advanced lever has three screws here, here, and uh, here. And they, those three need to come out and then this cap will just lift off. It's real simple. The only hard part is these screws here. They're extremely small and extremely short. And uh, they get lost real up oh, in my focus. I don't know if I may have to uh, turn the camera off. At least you can see it here. And they get lost. I've lost many of them over the years. Of all the screws on the um, cameras, that screw there uh, is the smallest and shortest and is the one easiest to get lost. And so I'm going to um, turn the camera off here and take those out because I don't think that uh, my camera will stay in focus. Okay, I got the three screws out without boring you to death. Once you get those uh, three screws out, you can see here it's just loose. When you um, put it back on, you want to put this red arrow here, this um, triangle right here on this uh, white dot. That's where your uh, film counter will uh, default back to when you open the back. But this just now comes off and you can see the screws out there where I took it out. When I said they were um, small, here they are under the camera. You can see how small they are. Very short, have a pointed end. There's no other screw quite like it, so if you lose one, you won't be able to hunt around and find another one like it. You'll have to get another uh, Pentex or a Spotmatic or K1000 off eBay, preferably non-working and uh, rob a screw out of it. So you don't want to lose those. And you say, well, um, how do I not lose them? Well, you've got two choices. And I'll show you the first choice here. And I'll pause the camera again. Okay, I'm back. One thing I use masking tape. I use a lot of it in my business. Um, I just get a piece of masking tape. Any tape will work. And you just stick to them, kind of like flypaper. And uh, that'll keep them from blowing away. Uh, you would say, well, how do, if I put them someplace, what, how do they get away? Normally, when you're using your air gun, you forget. And a puff of air goes over, and uh, they're very light. And uh, will blow them out of their container, whatever you've got them in. And they will um, be lost, for sure. I know because I've lost them, a lot of these. So it's just something for a beginner to be uh, cautious about. You've only got three, and if you lose one, well, you're just screwed. You've got to get another one. Okay. Kill the camera again, and I'll show you one other solution. Okay, the uh, other solution here is to put the screw back in the cap like so. All the way around, all three of them, and that way you won't lose them. And then you just grab your tray and you put your cap in it like so and you won't lose your screws. 
Seems like a minor thing, but I've lost a lot of them. And if you're an amateur or beginner, you will lose them. So keep track of them, put, uh, put them on tape, or put them back in the cap, and then put them in your tray. I use a ceramic paint trays for my parts. I tried some plastic ones, and they, uh, your, if your hand hits the uh, plastic uh, tray, parts will fly all over your desk. These uh, ceramic trays are very heavy and uh, they won't move. Okay, let's get that aside and move on. Okay, next part. We've got the um, cover of the counter off. Cover, the uh, counter now is exposed. See, it goes up to 36. And so what we do now is uh, we remove the center screw. Now there's very few cameras that um, have a left, but um, this screw here is the left. They usually do that so the screw won't come loose. And um, if amateurs don't know what a left is, it means that um, normally with a uh, screw, you'd go counterclockwise to loosen it. But if you do, you'll break this off inside and then you've really got problems. So what you do is you go right. Oops, and I slipped out. Let's see here. Counter's gonna go around and there okay and now it's coming out always kind of hard to do these on on the monitor see what i'm doing and as you can see it came out there it's always good to magnetize your tools it makes your work a lot easier if you're dealing with um, steel you know, of course with brass or aluminum why you can't do it won't do you any good i did know one repairman who did not like to magnetize his tools if you don't magnetize your tools, then you've got to use tweezers to hold the screw, and then you've got to use a screwdriver to uh, tighten it or loosen it, which uh, ties up two of your hands. With a magnetized screwdriver, it leaves you one hand free. Okay, let's set that aside. Okay, let's see all right once that's off this uh, here is just a plate and uh, normally it'll just flick off and it's not going to flick off because i want it to so we'll just turn the camera upside down and we'll get it here there it is uh, it's got a brass center i don't know why they used brass but anyway and you put it with your screw over here normally those parts don't get lost so that's not really a problem okay next we've got this um, steel holder here which holds the counter again this nut here even though it doesn't look like a nut with a notch here and here is a left so again you want to turn it clockwise not counterclockwise now, the difference is you can't break this nut. So if you go left or right, it's just, you know, it's only going to go one way. The point I'm trying to make is if you get a screw, like right here, see this threads here, and you turn it the wrong way, you'll break the screw off down inside there, and then you've got to drill it out with a, a Dremel tool. Plus, you've got to find another screw, which means you've got to buy another junker camera and rob the screw out of it. So you want to be careful about this left and right business when you're working on cameras. If you're not sure, which I have been on some cameras, you go a little bit left and a little bit right. When I say a little bit, I mean very little. You just want to break it free. I have seen Pentexes where the screw up here was uh, not a left, but was a right in the same way down here. I've been on Pentexes before where this is not a left and a right. But always try, um, assume it's the left, always, because nine times out of ten, this is the left and this is the left. I never have been able to determine why some cameras are left and some right, possibly where they were made. They were made at um, possibly different factories, and for some reason they changed it up for one run or something. And I don't know if I can do this on monitor, but... We'll try, and if I can't, we'll stop the camera. 
Okay, it moved. Got free. And uh, when you're pairing, you're looking down at the part. When you're making uh, videos, you're looking at the monitor so you can see what you're doing or what you're recording. And there it is. And again, it's magnetic, comes right out. So, I'll put it in another. Okay, and then this right here. Again, lifts out like so. It's not complicated, but it's not going to lift out because I'm on camera. Isn't that amazing how that works? Okay, I finally just had to go off camera there and take it out and get my... Just fits down. Nicely fits over the shaft. Okay, so far looking across, we've got the uh, cover for the counter. We've got the counter plate and that uh, screw that holds it in. And we've got the holder that holds the counter. There's three. No problem. The um, K1000 is a very easy to camera uh, to work on. Now this right here is what I call a clip washer. In other words, it's uh, wobbly, it goes up and down and it holds the clip. The point of it is to hold this uh, advanced lever from moving much because the clip rides under these tabs here, here, and here. And so what you do is you remove these three screws here and then you turn this clip washer uh, from say this is a top here pointing up um, you move it over to this position the clip lifts out and then the advanced lever lifts off real simple and I was not prepared each of these videos is different and I never know what tools I'm going to need pull that out Second one. Third one. Some of you are wondering, well, why does it show everything? Why does it go so slow? Because beginners are, are watching this and they want to see everything. They don't want you just to say, well, just take the screws out and remove it. They want to see the whole business and it makes it easier for them. Not everybody is really good with mechanical things and uh, you have to bear with them and show them. They'll get better, you know, as they, if they go back into this camera, it'll be a lot faster. Then you get these pointed uh, pliers again and you try not to stick down the hole. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it here. If you stick it down the hole, it won't turn. But if you can just catch the lip of that washer and turn it, and uh, I may have to turn the camera off and just show you. Yeah, I better turn the camera off and take it off. Okay, camera's back on. Uh, as you can see, the uh, washer now is loose. Um, the way that I was doing it was uh, about the only way you can do it is to stick um, a pair of pliers with two pointed tips on there and turn it either direction and get it out from under those tabs. Then it lifts right out. And now you can see the advanced lever slips right off. And that's it. The um, advanced lever now is off. This right here is what I would call a dust washer. It fits over it. I've seen cameras come in where that's missing. I don't like that, but it happens. It's made of plastic. They get lost real easy. Okay, so that's off now. And your tray over here, you look, there's your advanced lever. There's the three screws I took out. They're not as small as the ones over here. 
so that it's not as much dangerous and then not as much dangerous. I'll get it here. I gotta make this up as I go, folks. That's a line out of a Mighty Python movie. A Life of Brian, I think. Anyway, you can see, very simple. If you're a beginner, you'll have no problem with that. And now we've got this um, speed control. And I'll turn the camera off and we'll start on that. All right, let's go on to the um, last one here. Part is this um, speed control right here. Pretty simple, a hole here and a hole here. Now this is a right, not a left. Over here you had two right screw, uh, two left screws. Over here, or a screw and a nut. Over here, this is a right, which means you go counterclockwise. Uh, you always have to be careful with um, screws like this because um, they're so small that they are the ones that break off. Uh, a nut won't or, and is not going to break, but um, these screws are so tiny, and you're using a, a large pair of pointed pliers, you're applying a lot of torque. Now, the next thing you do is on all cameras, I always preset them at a certain speed in ASA. I have my own system, so for each camera, it'll be different. But like the, I, on this camera, I normally will set it at um, B at um, 20. So you also need to set your camera for B at 20 before you uh, take it apart. That's for timing reasons. That's so when you put it back together, when you're finished, it should be at B at 20. If you don't, then you've got to go through a series of hit or miss, trial and error, and try to figure out how everything goes. It just saves you time. It's not going to damage anything. So normally I'd get a pair of appointed um, pliers, and I would, if they would not catch my gloves, <laughs> put these in here. And I don't know if I can put these in the holes. All right, I added out a little section there. Put that in like so, like so. You go left, uh, I say left, uh, counterclockwise. You gotta get your uh, fingers here and hold it or it'll turn. And then you turn it like so. <laughs> Sorry folks, just don't seem to be hitting on all cylinders. Come on. Come out of there. There we go. That comes out. Just like so. Part of the problem is my eyes. I need to go in for an operation. Nothing serious. Cataracts. Okay, that right there comes out. Drop that in there. A spring will push this up, like so. This little plate here is your ASA plate. Notice that um, on the back here, there's a stud right there. And that stud goes down on that notch right there. And then you've got this spring here, which uh, pushes up. The whole arrangement there is so you can change your ASA. You have to um, pull this outside up and change your ASA and then let it sit back down. Okay. Normally, what I like to do, amateurs may or may not choose to do it, you can get a pin and mark this here and down here because they're separate, like so. But I use a scribe like this, and then I scribe down there. Now you can see on the video that they're lined up. Now, you'd say, well, okay, what's that for? That's so when I put it back together, and I'm gonna lift this up now, I know where it goes. 
And so when I get through, I know just to line them up and push it, put it back down inside. And I've got my timing already done. And I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to do a, um, you know, back and forth trying to get it all just right. You can see also when I'm setting up my timing, I'm putting this tab here in uh, about 11 o'clock position, which also speed things up. If you go deeper in the camera, you've even got to scribe this right here for reasons which I'll show you someday if we're ever down inside the camera. So, okay, we got those off. What's next? Next, maybe I can just keep the camera going here. The screw here on the top, and this screw here, and this screw here. Three needs to come out. Now this one here, if you look at it, you'll see it's larger. You gotta remember that, um, or you'll get them messed up. Large one here, two small ones here, and here. And let's see if I can keep this video going and get these. And then we'll have saving breaking it up in uh, the editor. Okay, I dropped one on my tray. A lot of times, whoops, a lot of times I have to edit out all my mistakes. And there's a lot of mistakes. It'd be so much easier if I was just a talking head, like on a lot of these YouTube videos, where I could edit out things like that. But when you're repairing Got a lot of things to edit out. Okay, there's the top. Most um, 35 millimeters have a screw here, here, and one on each end. But, uh, but not the uh, Pentex. Screws are on top, which is fine. They works good. Okay, I'm lifting up and we're off. And there's your top cover. Very easy to get off. All the um, detours I was giving you there was just how to keep out of trouble more than anything else. But um, the Pentex is one of the easier ones to uh, get the top cover off. As long as we've got the top cover off, we'll have a quick tour. You can see here, this is your advanced mechanism. And uh, I don't know if we can see it too much. You can see a gear here. There's a spring here which uh, ratchets it back when you press it forward, puts, pulls it back into position. Gears under here uh, control your speed. They go down to the bottom and engage your timer. Your timer is located right here. And uh, the controls up here, but the rods go down this way. And what else have we got here to look at? This, um, your ASA has a resistor. Here's the resistor. Um, I don't know what you'd call it. It's not a plate. It's, it's fiber. And uh, you got your black and yellow wire going to it. And so when you set your speed or your ASA, you're changing that resistor reading, which uh, goes to the meter. goes over the top. Here's uh, a contact for your flash. Of course, your prism. Go over to this side, there's your galvanometer or your meter movement, which uh, has a needle on it. Here's a small fiber, um, oh, I don't know what you'd call it, circuit. I'm not very good at electronics, I just fix them. Um, somebody who's really into electronics could get into this, but... Uh, and then there's a lot of soldering here, 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 just to uh, get this out, here. Here, there's a lot of places that have to be on solder to get into this camera. And what else? Not much else. This uh, wire here not, is notched into this um, rewind shaft. And so when you lift it up and you press it down, that wire goes into it. You heard it snap there. Holds it in place. You remove that wire and it'll just fall down into the camera which has happened to me occasionally with the top on. And then I have to go inside with a hook and uh, open it. This camera's in pretty good condition. There's um, some paint missing around the window here, which is unfortunate. 
Uh, there is a um, a photo cell right here, and there's the pot that controls it. There's a photo cell here, and there's a pot which controls it. And then there's one up here at the top. And um, I forget now what each one's for. I'd have to go look it up. This one here I know is for your um, high settings, like at um, broad daylight, at, uh, you know, when you're up to like F16, F11. This pot, this uh, photo cell over here is different. And this pot is set for low settings, where a really dim, dark room. So you have to balance them out. You have to set this one for your bright parts of your picture. And you have to set this photo cell here for your dim parts of the picture. And this one up here, I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry about that. But um, as you change your uh, f-stop, you're moving this tab right here. As you change your um, speed, you're changing the resistor here. And so both of them feed over to the circuit board and feed to this needle here. And of course, you want to get it balanced in the center for the proper setting. But it's really a very basic, simple system. No ICs, uh, nothing like that. And that's why this camera is so good for beginners, because it is simple. And that's about it. I'm going to stop the camera now, and we're going to put it back together. For those of you that um, already know camera repair, you may want to stop your video here and just go on. For those of you who are beginners and um, want me to help you get back, uh, put it back together, there might be a few things I can show you along the way. Um, you can watch the second half. And that's it for now. Let's turn that camera off and take a break and we'll start here in a second. Okay, I've had a break. I'm back and uh, let's put this thing back together. Let's see here. Where should we start? There's the camera. This is where we left it. Um, a lot of the things that go wrong with this camera can be fixed from the top or the bottom. It's a very simple camera in the sense that it doesn't have to come apart like an AE-1 where you can get to everything. If you've been inside an AE-1, you can look at this camera and see how simple it is. Excellent camera to uh, learn photography on. Okay, we've got our top cover here. One thing I forgot to tell you that I just have remembered and I should have told you sooner, and it is a danger zone. Let's call it that. And that is this right here. A lot of the cameras have a, a plunger like this that um, is put there for the self tire or not the cable release. And so when you attach a cable release to the camera and uh, press it, the um, plunger goes down and presses against this and trips the camera. And the problem is, is that uh, these little uh, studs or whatever you want to call them, they fall out when you're working on the camera and you never know it. And uh, what you want to do is put some grease on it and uh, put it back in so you don't lose it. Because... Um, when you turn the camera upside down to put it back on, or if you set it on the desk, this will fall out. When you're putting the top cover back on, if there's no grease in there, this will fall down into the camera, lock it up eventually, and somebody's going to have to go on there and uh, fish it out. So it's not a small thing. It's dangerous. You want to make sure that when you take the top cover off, first thing you do is locate this, put some grease on it, and put it back inside. This little uh, window here is for the, um, what is it for? I don't even know, right offhand. Oh yeah, when you uh, the camera is charged, it'll be, appear red underneath. And so that's just a little window to tell you if your camera is ready to fire or not. And again, these little windows here, the glue under them gets brittle, and these little windows will fall down into your camera and lock it up. So. It doesn't hurt while you've got the um, top cover off to put a little glue around the edge of it. And I prefer contact cement. Now, for those other repairmen that amateurs that only watched half, here's something else that uh, 
if you're putting it back together that you're going to learn. These contacts right here go up to the flash shoe. And you'll say, OK, fine. Put the top cover back on and they'll make contact again with the top of the camera right um, here, there. But what quite often happens, and I've had this happen to me many times, when I tell you these things, I just not, you know, just talking. These things actually messed me up in the past. These little contacts, for some reason, when you put the top cover back on, they won't quite make good contact. And you'd say, well, that doesn't make sense. It came off and it was had contact. If you take it off, it, it still should make it. They don't. I don't know why. I just know that uh, many times the... Uh, I'm looking for a screwdriver over here. Many times when you take off the top cover and put it back on, these little contacts here will not make good contact. They're, um, so what you do is you get some alcohol and you clean them. And you not only clean them, and you get a screwdriver down here and you push them up just gently, not much. Don't go overboard, just just a, a little bit push them up, like uh, an eighth of an inch. And so when you put the top cover on, they're not only cleaned, they will touch the contact on the camera and make contact and work. Uh, but um, in the past, when I was just learning to repair cameras, I didn't do that. And uh, the customer would get it and say, well, my uh, flash is not working. And uh, I would have to take the top cover off bend these up, clean them, and bend them up slightly for the customer. And I learned very quickly just to do that automatically. The same way with this. When you take the top cover off, locate this first, make sure it's in here. Even if it's um, stuck in there pretty good, still take it out, put some grease on it, and then reinsert it. Because when you put the top cover back on like this, if that grease is not in there, that uh, stud will uh, fall maybe here or down here or down in there and uh, work its way down into the camera and lock it up. It may not happen immediately, but you'll never know and uh, until it does lock up and then it'll be too late. Okay, what else can I show you? One small thing, which is just information. It's not about top covers. This little gear here, if I remember in the book, is called an idler gear. And they wear out, or they show wear. And uh, it's a very strange thing. Uh, I used to, when uh, back when Pentex was making these cameras, I could buy these. And uh, if you'll notice, and you may not, unless you're a camera repairman or had a lot of cameras, a lot of the Pentex Spotmatics are really hard to advance after a while. I've never had any camera as bad as the Pentex Spotmatics about getting harder and harder to advance where pretty soon it takes a lot of pressure to advance the film. And as this gear right here needs to be replaced. It's just something to keep in mind that if you pick up a, a Pentex like at a camera show and it's really hard to advance, this little gear here is worn out. Uh, as I, the best I remember in the book, it was called Idler Gear and it needs to be uh, replaced. And it's a lot of trouble to replace it, by the way. You've got to take this advanced uh, stack apart. You've got to take this off, this off, this plate off, and to get down to it, so it's, it's hard. It's not something an amateur really can do. Uh, only a repairman that can uh, get it all back together and get this right, because um, when you pull this plate off, there's a lot of things in there that'll just fall out. So just, um, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say if you go to a, a camera show, advance the Pentex that you're uh, considering buying. If it's hard or rough, don't buy it because this idler gear here on the camera is worn. If the camera hasn't had much shell, uh, film shot through it, this uh, gear is fairly new and it will advance very easy. And uh, some of you say, well, that doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't make sense to me either, but it's just something to know that um, uh, when you're buying a Spotmatic to show, compare two or three, pick the one that advances the easiest because this gear here is in good shape. 
if it's really hard to advance, no matter how nice the camera looks, I'll pass it up. And you'd say, well, I'll just send it to a camera repairman and replace that. Well, yeah, you may not have that gear. I ran out of them years ago. What I do now is um, if a customer sends in a Pentex that's advancing hard, I uh, will buy maybe um, six Pentexes at once off eBay. And uh, the one that uh, has the best gear in it, I put it in the customer's camera. It's a very expensive proposition and it's not very satisfactory, but it's the only solution I've found. Since they're not being made anymore, and the ones that the repairmen do have at the shop have been used up. But this gear here is um, its a shame that the camera has to be destroyed all because of one gear. But uh, it's just something to be aware of if you're a Pentex fan. If it's really hard to advance, this gear here's the problem. Okay, let's get going. For those of you that um, maybe get tired of my talking and talking um, in these videos and making them so long, you have to remember that I started repairing in um, 78 and um, I've got 45 plus years of knowledge about these cameras and there's no way I can stuff it into a 10 minute video and so occasionally I go off script and um, start talking about them and telling you things which you may or may not want to know. When you put the um, top cover back on this spacer here can get pinched. I've done that many times. Pull it off now and show you here. It's um, made of plastic. It's got a notch in the bottom and on the top it, it rises up and it goes just like this on top of this. It's nothing more than a spacer for the uh, top cover and bottom cover and uh, if you don't get it right properly in place when you put the uh, top on it will uh, cut right into it and pinch it and I've done that many times so you have to check that before you put the top on so once you get the top on very simple you've got your three screws the big one and the two little ones off camera there this is a small one, goes on uh, this side over here. See if we can put that in there. I like doing things on camera. It always irritates me when I have to, oops, watch it, Sony. When I have to go off camera. I was looking at my, um, what is it, um, that chart? that uh, analytic, analytics, analytics, what is it called? I can't remember now, analytics. And it was, uh, I was looking to see that um, most of my viewers are over 65. Boomers. I never have understood why there are so many uh, videos on uh, YouTube that slam boomers. Anyway, okay, um, top cover now is on. The uh, little contacts that I showed you here to bend are now touching the uh, flash shoe. The uh, stud that goes into this advance, uh, not the advance, this release, the grease is holding it in place. You couldn't see when you put it on, but hopefully it's where it belongs. And then you've got your spacer here, which is properly. One thing that um, I used to not do when I first started repairing cameras is checking the camera along the top here. Quite often you get so um, busy worrying about getting the top on, you don't even know it and you pinch a wire. And these top covers act, act just like uh, wire cutters. They'll cut a wire in two uh, real easy. I mean, you if the wire is there and you're screwing these down like this, uh, it, yeah, it's just, uh, it'll cut them right in two. So I always check. 
once I sent an Olympus all the way to Florida and uh, the customer contacted me and said there was a wire showing in the front here and I apologized to him very more than once and he sent it back to me and it just took a second to take the top cover off and put the wire back but still it was embarrassing I never forgot it and I've been more careful ever since all right we'll put it back together the same way we took it apart we will do the um, speed next okay switch this camera over here now I hadn't changed anything if you're working on a camera like pulling the mirror cage out you will eventually your fingers or thumb or something will hit this and it will change but in this case nothing has moved the uh, timing marks are still in the same place which makes things uh, simpler for this particular video oh, there's the little window you can see the red the red what does that mean it's not charged or it's charged I don't know as far as I know this camera is not charged I guess red means danger what if you're taking a picture that's really important and uh, the camera is not charged and it's red and it's telling you charge the camera before you take that picture or you'll miss it this is not like digital. You got to be filming the camera. You got to get it right the first time. Okay, so we can see these are lined up. We can see our tabs here. And uh, I quite often, when I'm putting a camera apart or back together, I use these petri dishes uh, to make things simpler. Uh, I've seen repairmen that just scatter parts all over their desk and work. I can't work that way. I like everything separate. So, grab this right here. You can see the um, hole right there. So, we uh, will line this up and we'll do it off camera so nobody knows what's going on. Let's see here. I can do this on camera or not. There, snapped into place. You can see the uh, top of it where it came through right there. And I don't know if that's in focus or not. Sometimes I can't tell. Okay, next thing we do is uh, put the spring in. Now the spring has a, uh, a, a large end and a smaller end up the top and the uh, large end goes down like so I've actually put them in upside down in the past in the past I did a lot of things but we're talking over a period of 40 years so I've learned the next thing is uh, a little tricky I'll probably have to turn the camera off but um, to get it right this um, stud here goes um, down in this hole here all right I had to turn the camera off there a second to uh, show things the um, when I told you to take that off I told you to set it for B 20 the B is supposed to be pointed at this triangle here and your 20 window was about here and uh, things like this help it when you put it back together make things go faster you don't have to sit around with it and try so you put um, your B like so and press it down and you put your 20 in this window right here and you line up the two and the reason this is important is because you won't get it the first time but you'll know when it uh, falls into place but you've got to press down and uh, as you're pressing down you've got to get this uh, whatever size this shape this is over 
this right here. And you've also got to get that um, notch of that ASA plate down here. That's the best way I can explain it. And it uh, takes more than one try. And I'm not going to be able to do this on camera. I'll have to do it off camera because it's, uh, it's tricky. But you got to press down uh, after you get everything lined up. You got to press down and then jiggle back and forth and uh, try to keep the 20 ASA in that window and keep the B pointed at that triangle. So you line them up and you're pressing down on the spring and you'll hear a click. And uh, you'll know when you got it because this will be all the way flush down on top of this. All right, back again. And I wanted to show you something here. It's for the beginner. Our experienced repairman is not going to have to go through all this. But um, you've got the uh, spring where you've pressed down. You've got this... Um, in its notch here and you've got your 20 ASA in the window and you think well I got it that's it I need to just put in the screw and I'm done no you're not I'm lifting up now on the outside of this ring this uh, speed control I'm pressing in the center and pulling up but it's not coming up and um, if I wanted to change the ASA I couldn't this outside um, knob I guess you'd call it, and it's spring-loaded. It has to come up to change the ASA. And what I've done in the past is I've uh, put it down and then put the screw back, gave it back to the customer, and the customer would come in and say, well, I can't change my ASA. And it because it, I was a beginner myself at one time back in 78, and I was an idiot, and I didn't check it. And so you've got to... Uh, if this happens to you, you got to try again. Uh, left up, uh, lift it up, get the plate up. Try to get the, um, what you've done is you, on the uh, ASA plate, that stud on it is not in the hole. And uh, that's why this uh, knob can't come up. So try again and again, and I'll show you how it's supposed to work here in a second. Okay, I'm back again. It looks the same as it did before, uh, just a second, but um, I got it off camera and I got that stud down in the hole. Now when I lift up, and I don't know if you can see that, you can see the knob comes up, presses against the spring and comes up, and you can see that the uh, I can change the ASA. And that's uh, where I made my mistake when I was uh, an apprentice learning to repair cameras is um, I didn't check that before I sent it off to the uh, customer. And so once you um, get that and it's doing this, this is without the screw, then the next thing to do is hold it down, the stack, and uh, put your screw in there. I'll do that again off camera. Okay, got the screw in there. I've done everything but uh, tighten it up. I'm putting my finger against the um, speed control to make sure that it doesn't turn. And I'm not on camera. Okay. I'm going clockwise. And how tight? Well, that screw is pretty small. I don't know if that's uh, brass or steel, but you'll snap it off in there. And how do I know this? Because I've done it in the past. All these mistakes I'm warning you about, I've done them. So all, about a two is as much as you want to tighten that. That's a two out of 10, which isn't tight at all. Remember, you may be going back into this camera someday and you don't want to tighten it up to three or four. Between three and four is a good place that you will snap it in two. Okay, now that it's down 20 and change it up to about um, 100 ASA. It's at B right now. Set it for 25. Now at uh, 25 at 100 ASA is a good um, speed and ASA uh, setting for uh, taking pictures outside. 
And again, if you go back into it, set it for uh, B and turn it down to 20. Each camera, I set the ASA and speed for, um, for timing. And I've got it written down and on my computer. And uh, plus, I remember most of them. But uh, it's for a purpose. It's for timing purposes to make it easier and quicker to get in and out of the camera. And of course, I also mark them inside. But in this case, I never shoot 20 uh, ASA film. I've shot uh, 25 ASA film in the past, but not, not 20. 100 B for bulb and uh, 25. Normally when I send a camera back to the customer, I set it in this position for them. So we've got the uh, speed control back on. And uh, for those of you out there that are total beginners, I've explained how it, uh, to press the parts down on and uh, get it lined up and make sure that uh, this outside ring is able to pull up. And how that uh, if you're not careful, you will tighten the screw down and knowingly, unknowingly, you will lock this down. It will not come up. Not only will it not come up, you won't be able to change the ASA. So, for uh, total beginners, that's how you get the uh, speed control back on. Now next, we're going to put the uh, advanced lever back on. So we'll stop the camera here and start here in a second. The um, advanced lever is pretty straightforward. Nothing really scary about that. The, um, this dust cover I have sometimes forgotten to put it on the uh, customer's uh, camera in the past. And uh, that's a shameful admission. But um, it's true. But I was a younger repairman at that time in my 30s. And uh, I made a lot of mistakes. I had... Uh, you didn't go for to school to repair cameras. You always started out as an apprentice in a shop. And I had uh, two different teachers. One was, um, as I remember his name was Jim Swanner. He's probably dead by now. He was in a wheelchair. And uh, he started me out. And then uh, the other uh, teacher I had was a, a man by the name of Ron Stubbs, who was a, a friend of mine. And uh, over the years, but you basically, a uh, camera repairman, have to teach himself. A, uh, if you learn at a shop, they can't just stand there and watch you, uh, like I'm doing in these uh, videos. They've got own, their own cameras they have to repair. They can kind of guide you, and they can help you when you get into problems areas. Okay, this fits right on top. There's a notch down there that it fits in you'll know when it falls into place. It's very obvious the way it feels. And then we've got this um, clip here that uh, goes on top. And uh, these high parts here and here go under these uh, studs here and here. And as you can see the holes, there's no uh, threads under it. And so you turn this. And normally I use a, a pair of pointed pliers and uh, let's see if I can do it on camera turn it and uh, this is terrible wish I could do better now around and there we go now you can see the holes and uh, they're not perfectly lined up I'll have to work on that a little bit but we'll get those like so. And now we're ready to put in our three screws. Okay. Had to edit there a little bit. Some time out. And we'll put that in like so. You don't want to tighten your first one down. Make it loose. Um, these other, this plate may have to move a little bit to the left or right. And that's true, and anytime you're working on a camera, it's a good uh, rule to follow. 
If um, several screws are holding on a part, never tighten down the screws. Always put them in loosely so the part can uh, move around and get in a position. Most often this happens with the front cover. This uh, front cover here has a screw here, 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 and here. And uh, if you tighten a screw, then uh, this part here can't move. And so the others start having problems lining up and uh, creates more problems. So if you're ever working on a camera and the part has more than one screw, make sure that you uh, don't tighten it down until after you get the all the screws in. Okay, we've got our second one here. And I screwed up. And the reason is because this plate's not, this clip is not exactly where it should be. Okay, and I cheated a little bit and uh, put the uh, other two in uh, off camera. But I did not tighten them up. So we'll tighten them up now. I don't know how I'm ever going to make full tutorials where the mirror cage is pulled out. This is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Okay, got our advanced lever on. And uh, that clip is um, holding it in place. I'm moving it now up and down. A little bit of play, but it's in place. Now we've got to get this um, counter. First, we've got to put in the base that the counter fits in. And that part would be right here. And we just put that over here, line it up with uh, whatever there is underneath it, and press down. You'll know when it's there because it'll just go straight down. Now we got to put the uh, nut on there. Remember that the nut is a left, so you would not go clockwise to tighten it up. You go counterclockwise. It's not very intuitive, but um, you get used to it. And can I do this on camera? Seems to be working. Miracle. I didn't think it was going to work for me. Here we go. It's tight now. And uh, you get these. Uh, these are rounded tips, which normally you would use um, square tips. But uh, there's so little pressure that is used to um, hold this uh, nut in place that um, I'm using these. If it really had to be tight, I would, uh, I've got some somewhere that uh, are squared. And this is not going to work. I'm going to have to turn the camera off. Okay, I tightened it up with the um, pliers with the pointy tips. Uh, I only tightened it up to about a two. Uh, it, all it's doing is holding down that uh, plate for the uh, counter. It doesn't need to be tight. Same way in a camera. Most people that work on cameras work on cameras like they're working on cars, and that's you don't want to do that. On a car, you tighten things up as tight as you can get them, but on a camera, you most things are just put on with the pressure of a two or a three, maybe. Um, any part that needs to be really tightened down, torqued down, I will tell you, but most parts don't. A camera is just not under the, uh, much torque when it's uh, working. And uh, it just makes more work with whoever takes it apart, and it serves no purpose. So um, anytime you're tightening something on a camera, um, not a one, but always just a two or a three is enough out of ten to tighten something down. Okay, the next thing we're going to put on is the um, counter plate. And uh, it can go two different ways, but... Um, Obviously, you want the zero uh, up here at uh, on the pointing toward the front. You don't want to put on the plate where it's pointing toward the back. That wouldn't be right. Um, if the camera has been opened, the back has been opened, it will zero out to this position here. Next thing we do is put the uh, screw to hold on the plate. 
and it's a left and so you go counterclockwise with it and it finally started my third try How tight? Again, after my little lecture, a two or a three tops. On this one, I prefer a two. It doesn't need to be tight, and I don't want to break it off. You never know if these screws are a metal or brass. Well, I guess you could with, with a magnet. Check them out. This one is steel, so it's probably not going to break, but it's just pointless to tighten things too tight on a camera. Okay, next thing is um, putting this uh, plate on top. If you've um, put the screws in it to uh, keep them safe, what you do now is you back them out a little bit, enough to get the cap on. You don't um, uh, take them out completely and you don't want to get them too loose or they'll just fall out. So I'll do that now. Okay, I've loosened them, and um, if my camera will focus, you can see some of the threads on that screw. Back them out about that much to uh, get the cap on. And put the cap on the lays over like so. And you would say, well, where do you put it at? It's um, a headache sometimes getting this... Um, Looking for my tweezers here. It's a headache sometimes getting this um, triangular red pointed, but um, you want it pointed at that um, big uh, white dot because that's a start. When you first put your film in the back and close it, it should start there. And when you advance it twice, it should be up here on the zero. But uh, sometimes you have to play with it. Now I'm going to open the back and then close it and then I'm going to tighten all of these probably off camera to save a little time okay I've tightened all three of those little screws and now comes the test if you've uh, done it all right the uh, camera should be at zero when you advance it twice and it's not you can see here that um, I've advanced it twice and the zero is not lined up with that square so what I have to do now is um, loosen all three of the screws just slightly not much and adjust it now I've loosened those uh, screws now and you can see now it's uh, it won't come off the cap won't but uh, I can move it. And so uh, I put that uh, dead center and uh, I'm not gonna be able to do this, am I? Probably not. Oh, lucked out. Okay, tighten that one. Now I'm gonna tighten the other two. Okay, I tighten the other two and um, you saw how small those screws were, and uh, you don't want to uh, tighten them too much. Um, a two is more than enough, never a three. And let's see, I press it here, and and you say, well, why so much trouble? There's pointed at five, because customers have brought these cameras back to me, and they've said, well, the uh, the counter is not quite lining up. Can you fix that? And then, of course, I have to uh, work on it and fix it for them. If it's your personal camera, you may not care. And you, you say, well, why are you taking so much time to align a, a number up on the counter? Well, that's the reason, because I repair these for a living. And customers will complain. So uh, it can't be like um, in between 4 and 5. It has to be on 5. So the customer won't complain. I have to do that. So, okay, the advanced lever now is on and the counter is on and it's properly set. And if I open the back, 
it snaps back to zero. So we've got the uh, advanced lever on with the counter. We've got the uh, speed control on. And let's see that red. Okay. When it's fired, it's black. When it's ready to fire, the, <laughs> evidently the uh, camera's red. Fine. I should have known that. Been doing this 40 years. But each camera's different. Some uh, cameras are just reverse of that, so I never really worry about it. I just make sure that it's working. I don't care about the position. Okay, next thing we're going to be working on is the uh, rewind. All right, we're coming to a close. The uh, other experienced repairman who uh, stopped watching the uh, video at uh, halfway point and didn't want to watch the reassembly, look how all they missed, all the fun. They didn't um, learn that, uh, unless they already knew, that you need to um, grease this. They didn't learn that you need to move those contacts slightly. So uh, there's some advantage to watching the whole video. All right, the uh, rewind's next. Extremely simple. Not all, this is probably one of the simplest cameras there is. And uh, even being as simple as it is, well, I've taken you through it and you've seen. We put this, um, I guess it's just a spacer. If it is a spacer, why did they put this big notch in it? I don't know. They don't tell us uh, peons that work on it, these things. It's um, a standard right. And screws around. I know that um, I work on very complicated cameras sometimes, and it's really refreshing being able to work on a camera that um, doesn't just eat your lunch. I'm having some problems um, working, but it's because I'm on camera. Okay, a right. How tight? Oh, about a two. A three, if you feel like you need to tighten it down more. I wouldn't. That's enough. Okay. This camera has no uh, washers or complicated pins going through the... Uh, well, it has a pin, but um, it's being held in there by a clip, so you don't have to worry about that. I was trying to think of the camera that um, I did here recently that had a, um, a pins in it, and I spent some time explaining that you'll lose those pins, and I have lost them. Okay, so got that. Pull up. Get your uh, tweezers. Put in here. Uh, tighten it down. Tighten it down to about a three. These do tend to come undone, these knobs. So, tighten that up. Very clean camera. The rails here are not rusted, like on many of the cameras I see. Excellent. This camera is in pretty good condition in some places. And it looks like somebody else worked on it in the past. Some company called Advanced Camera Repair, Portland, Oregon. Even got a phone number. I wonder if they're still in business. Hmm, interesting. Okay, close it and switch cameras okay there we go i'm looking at my tray here nothing in it so that means that i didn't forget anything and uh here we go we got our rewind button now back on got our advance working properly if i can find the buttons on the screen our speed controls right no wire is sticking out or clipped anywhere. Front spacer's in place. We're ready to go. This camera's ready to go out and take some cool pictures. Maybe some nice black and white prints to be uh, exhibited in a gallery. So, that's about it. You now know how to uh, take that uh, top cover off and put it back. Easy peasy. Okay, that's it. Um, which one? How about that camera there? That'll work. 
yellow face. Those GoPros take time to switch over to white. Uh, oh, I got to turn that off. Um, K1000. Took the top cover off, put it back. Pretty simple camera to work on. Um, really no problems. I'd warn you about losing those screws on that um, cap that goes over the um, counter. They will get lost, and uh, once they're go it's gone, then you're... <laughs> You're going to have to get another camera and steal uh, some screws out of it. So watch out for that. Uh, once you get the top cover off, immediately put some grease on that plunger and uh, put it back in there to uh, safeguard your camera. Um, when you put the top cover on, make sure you bend those uh, contacts down just slightly and clean them so that uh, the flash will work properly. And that's about it. The rest of it was very basic. It's a fun camera to work on. For an amateur that wants to um, play with um, taking cameras apart, put them together, um, the K1000 is an excellent camera to um, start on. Unfortunately, I don't have any more tutorials for it at this time. Uh, I repair cameras full time in the daytime. I, in the evenings, the only time I can make these tutorials, and I sometimes don't even have time for those. And um, originally, when I started this channel, I thought um, that, uh, well, I'd have, you know, a lot of subs and a big viewer count, and uh, I could quit my day job, as uh, most YouTubers always want to do. But it didn't work out that way. The uh, people that want to uh, work on cameras is a pretty small niche. But I don't mind. It's just the way it's going to be. I just won't be able to make as many uh, tutorials as I want to make. And I'm rambling, and I'm sorry it happens at my age. Thanks for dropping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. Later.